Greetings AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here for our video that covers topic 10.3. Notice I said video, singular. There's only one video that's going to cover this really short convergence test, and I will take care of our loan example in its four parts for you here. This is the nth term test for divergence. So let's take a look and see what the notes say here. We start this with a couple of theorems. And I'm just going to throw this one at you that I've entitled Theorem 10.3a, the limit of the nth term test of a convergent series. And it says that if the summation of a sub n as n goes from 1 to infinity converges, then the limit as n approaches infinity of that nth term expression, that little formula here for a n, would certainly indeed have to equal 0. Now what that is saying is if we try to add this guy, let's say that we just threw these terms in a1 and a2 and a3 and a4 all the way up to a n and beyond because we are summing this to infinity. If that sum exists, the only way that's going to happen is if these terms themselves tend towards zero or get smaller because the thought process is that by the time we get deep into this series we are essentially adding things that are just very very small that they're like insignificant they're negligible they don't really matter and it's a really important idea that we need to really understand now that's not the nth term test for divergence it sets up the nth term test for divergence. So as I said, it seems maybe intuitive that a series cannot possibly add to a finite sum unless the terms themselves approach to zero. What's important from that theorem that we just talked about is that its contrapositive is true. Remember what a contrapositive is for an if-then statement? You do two things. You switch the if and the then, and you negate both. So we have if the former conclusion is opposite or not equal to zero, then our series is the opposite of converge, which is diverge. And this is the nth term test for divergence. And I cannot emphasize enough the name is the nth term test for divergence. I'll get into that more here in just a moment. So what do you do to determine whether a series will diverge using this test. Well, you look at your series and you basically get right after the limit of that nth term expression as n approaches infinity. Sometimes you'll get very lucky, like in this problem. The limit of n over n plus 1, the easiest way to take this limit as n approaches infinity is to look at the powers of n, they match, divide the coefficients, and you get 1. If that doesn't work for you, I suppose you could use L'Hopital's rule because you do have an indeterminate form where an infinity and an infinity reveal themselves on the top and the bottom. Now, is 1 equal to 0? Last time I checked, it was not. So what that means is this is a series that's going to diverge. And that's all it takes. If you get 1 as an answer, the series will diverge. If you get anything besides zero as an answer, the series will diverge. But what if you do get zero? We'll talk about that here in a second. Let's look at part B. Once again, you go right after the limit. It does not make any difference what your n is starting with. So we're going to be focusing on this. Now sometimes this limit isn't quite as cut and dry. And this is what bothers students. It's like we think that we have to apply some really strong cookie cutter sort of approach to finding these limits. And oftentimes it just requires your intuition, your numeracy, your number sense. And when you come across a problem like this, of course we have this infinite value over an infinite value if we try to directly substitute. And that is an indeterminate form. But I don't believe that L'Hopital's rule is going to help you with this problem. If you try it, you're just going to end up getting 
in a wild goose chase because the derivative of one plus ln of uh, one plus three to the n is the natural log of three times three to the n, and you have that again in the bottom except the natural log of two times two to the n, and you're just going to be in this endless cycle of having to continue to use L'Hopital's rule and you won't get out of it. So what do you do instead? Well, okay, you could split this apart. But again, I don't think that is going to remedy all of our issues. Because this is certainly going to tend towards zero if n gets to be really big. But you're still going to have to determine what that's doing. And just use your intuition about what's growing faster. Is it the numerator or is it the denominator? And since the numerator has a higher base than the denominator, 3 versus 2, that means that the numerator is simply going to grow faster. And what that will cause this to do is approach positive infinity. And guess what? Positive infinity is not equal to 0. And you have another series that will diverge. Again, we're just trying to avoid zero. Zero is a bad thing to get for the nth term test for divergence. Let's take a look at part C. Once again, you go right after the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. Now, it's pretty clear as n gets really big, this is going to give you zero. It's pretty obvious. So for the first time, we got this thing that we didn't really want to get. Now here's where you've got to be careful. It's very easy to want to write the word converge because we just assume that if the opposite of this is true, then we just take the opposite of that word. But that is not what this theorem says. This is called the nth term test for divergence, for divergence. It only will tell you if the series diverges. So what do we say? We say the nth term test is inconclusive. Or you could say can't tell with the nth term test. Now, if you are watching this video after you've gone through a few more of the topics in Unit 10, you know darn well what this does. You're probably thinking, by golly, that is the divergent harmonic series. This does diverge, but it doesn't diverge because of the nth term test. We're going to need another test later on. We'll talk about that. But for right now, for what we know, this is your best answer. It's a true statement. All right, let's take a look at part D. For this guy, we're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the third over n factorial. Well, in my classroom the other day, we had a discussion with students about n factorial. We saw it for the first time in topic 10.1, and we realized that it doesn't work very well with calculus. You can't really take derivatives of it. You certainly have trouble with integrals and, and limits for that matter. So again, what you have to do is use your numeracy, use your knowledge of numbers. If we let n be certain values in this problem, like 1, our first term is 1 over 1. If we let n be 2, we have 2 cubed, which is 8 over 2. If we let n be 3, we have 3 cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6. If we let n be 4, 4 to the third, which is 64 over for the factorial, which is 24. Well, it seems like this is bringing something very interesting to light. It seems like we just get these large numbers on top, and the bottom is, well, it's, it's kind of getting large too, but is it getting larger faster? So if we keep this idea going, a5, 5 to the third, boy, that's getting complicated now. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And I don't know how well you are with the memorization of your factorials, but 5 factorial is 120. Tell you what, let's do one more. It's about as high as I can go and know what the third power is. 6 to the third, I think that's 36 times 3 
36 times 3, well, if you don't know what that is, we can just do it the long way here. It turns out that it's 108. So we'd have 108 on top. Now, 6 factorial is really 5 factorial times 6, which is 720. Now, do you see what just happened? Our denominator has overtaken the numerator. So therefore, you can make the proclamation that this denominator is growing faster. And in fact, it grows much faster. By the time you get a very large value of n, this n factorial will destroy n to the third. And so therefore, this limit is actually going to approach 0. 0 is not what we want for our divergence test. And so once again, we're going to have to say that we don't really know what's happening here. The nth term test is inconclusive. Now, if you're wondering, is there a way to figure out what this series does? And there is. You're probably going to have to stick around for a while because I think the best test to use comes later on in this particular unit, and it's actually an easy test to use. Turns out that this guy is going to converge. We'll find out later why. So for now, what is it that we want to think about with the nth term test? Well, it's very important to note that if the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity is 0, the series does not necessarily converge. It's just going to mean that the nth term test is inconclusive. And then secondly, you're going to start to see more factorials in your series expressions. And they can be a little tricky to deal with, right? They don't play nicely with calculus, as I like to say. So it's really important that you think of the logical impact that they would have on the series expression and then use your sense of numbers. This takes care of our probably shortest test, the nth term test for divergence. I hope it makes sense. I'd like you to practice it a little bit. And then we're going to move on for our next test, the integral test in topic 10.4. Thanks for joining.